What is up, everyone, and welcome to another week of Spike Down. We're already at week number five with your favorite yappers, Van Silly and Roy. Roy, I think just last weekend, we were able to finally see each other after a very long time because we were hanging out at the Shopify Rebellion offices to see uh, the Game Changers' victory of Shopify Rebellion themselves. Um, how you been, man? I think I haven't seen you in, like, what, 12 hours? But, yeah, it's been uh, a, it was so a pretty long, 12 hours, wasn't it? Oh, I was. We had, the, you know, the, the, the esports dads got to spend some time together and drink mocktails. Shout out to Sean Garris for that one. Um, <laughs> I can't, wait, now, story, I can't wait to tell the lore on Twitter. Um, I cannot wait to expose it. But for now, <laughs> yeah, it's been it was, it was a pretty great weekend. We got to watch GC finals and now we're back onto challengers. It's Valorant, 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 baby. I love that. Exactly. And even even just before the uh, just before the Game Changers finals, actually, we ha also had the week number three, uh, of course, of challengers. And you know what? I don't think there's anything that's super cool or like big to really talk about because there's like the the teams that were supposed to win kind of like one. Yep. But at least there's some like ODs that we could actually talk about. There was at least like a big M80 win. When we talk about teams that are supposed to win, M80 is supposed to be one of those teams. And they haven't had yep. the hardest, uh, the hottest of starts. But at least this time around, it looked oh, very convincing as against Core. Um, on top of that, Nismo was looking like he was firing all cylinders back to the old yeah. Nismo self. And I think mm -hmm. overall now this team looks pretty awesome. But uh, I think I want to go more specifically into even not only them looking good in terms of synergy and being able to shoot, but it's also coming out with interesting compositions because if you're looking at the Euro, uh, sorry, at the Ascent composition, we pulled out a Yoru for Qualidu, but I think yeah. this is the first time they pulled out a Yoru in like his VCT career. <laughs> and then we also had Nismo on a deadlock uh, and it was like, what, a one-sided affair of I think of like a 13 or four scoreline. So I want to know your thoughts about this composition. Um, okay. Wow, there's so much. To, I'll start with the comp, and then we're going to go more general to M80 stuff, okay? So sure. the composition itself is actually pretty sick. Um, it's, it's sort of a variation of the Turtle Troop meta, right? Where they, they kind of brought in the Deadlock Cypher combo. So it's, it's just that, but instead they swapped out the Jet for the Yoruts for the extra flashes, because that is the one thing the Jet comp lacks, right? It's like they dropped KO for Deadlock, but they never really got flashes from anywhere else. So they actually mm. picked up the Yoru as a sort of replacement for that. And... Yeah, like, I mean, <clears throat> like, the comp functions essentially the same way as a jet comp does, right? You have a lot of, you have a lot of op plays with Yoru, you have a lot of aggression plays with Yoru, and, I mean, you can just mm -hmm. tell, like, by how aggressive M80 was, just looking at the stat sheet, if yeah. four and one on the openers for Koala, three and zero on the openers for Nismo, three and one on openers for Xander, like, they were so aggressive on the openers, and they, they were not relenting on, on the gas pedal, so, I mean, shout out to them, um, but yeah. more, more generally, though, Vans, you remember how, like, in the beginning of in the beginning of the season, we were talking about Koala and Nismo not really firing on all cylinders, and it was sort of like yeah. the one thing we kind of expected from a MAD. Now it seems like they might low key. Are they back? They might be back, dude. <laughs> I'm hoping so. And on top of that, they're not only they're shooting, but they're shooting with some great synergy too. And yes. even to take it back to a point where you're talking about their uh, their composition, how aggressive mm -hmm. they was uh, they were rather. This is also all on their defensive side as well, which is fairly interesting too. So I think wow. I think that advantage of having that deadlock in your comp uh, as well for Nismo allows for you to blot that lane and and have like this four man hit or the aggression out of a certain spot. Whereas if the if the pressure then comes into like, oh, let's try to figure out the weak side or let's try to just try to fight out against Nismo, then at least the Yoru allows for you to TP back and also have like the extra uh, player in the uh, in the team to be able to help oh, yeah. anchor out the sites or be able mm -hmm. to help out the player to retakes, as you said. I think you brought out an inter interesting shout to say that uh, we, we brought our Yoru instead of Kale because I actually didn't even think about that, um, that the, the lack of flashes, if you're going to pull away from the KO and bring out a deadlock, and then you need something to compensate for that too on, yeah. on retakes, because if not, it's so difficult to retake on, on this mm -hmm. B and A site when players are anchored within on a pulse plant on the attack. So that's actually pretty good. I, I am also... Um, my stocks are slowly coming back here for M80, and I'm hoping to see that this, this trend continues in a right way, in the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's... I think it's good. You know what? I'm I'm already gonna flip the I'm gonna flip my uh, my hopes. I think they're gonna look pretty awesome right oh, now. Oh, you guys I'm sold in one movie. week? I mean, it looks so cool. No, man. that's crazy. It was so it did, it did, it did, it did, it against core. You know, it's it's not yep. because it's it's uh you know core and and T Dog and and everybody that and that roster that has actually an amazing roster as well for core. That's like a 
a, a mid pack type of like I could have upsets here and there on certain weeks. And yeah. if MED is able to come out very strong and you have to think about how T dog and the coaching staff over at core does a lot of, uh, you know, prep work against their opponents, especially at this oh, level, where sure. they're able to prep once a week. The, they mm-hmm. definitely come in with a certain game plan. And if you unfortunately you're still falling by so far behind in the results against M80, then it shows that M80 was really good and sticking to their own game plan and didn't have to readjust too much. And in that sense, it, it shows yeah. that type of domination that we expect out of M80, right? It's not like the, right. oh, crap, they're going to have to pull timeouts and try to come back or like try to figure things out. Like everything worked out in their game plan for themselves. Yeah, I mean, I would like to add as well that like, how do you even prepare for a comp you've never even seen before? Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, but they, they can only do so much prep. Like they can be like, oh, you know, this is this is Koala's, you know, habits. But like as soon as you load in, you're like, Yoru deadlock. That's <laughs> uh, that was not in the homework. Like, what, what do we do against this? Right. And obviously yeah. it kind of worked because they, they got the defense surprise factor. And it's just like it was kind of it was it's kind of crazy from there, to be honest. Um, yeah, nice boxes, I mean, that one's that one's a little bit more tame. So they, they probably had exactly. a little bit more homeworks. Hence, their better results on that side. But I mean, I'm I'm kind of on your boat. Like I definitely see the uptrend here for M80, but also Core has not really been playing too well in the stage two, to be honest, right? Like they took a mm. pretty harsh loss against Dobros and <laughs> it honestly does not feel like they've recovered into the M80 match, um, which is <laughs> kind of tough, but no, yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, if anything though, that that's, that was the point I was going to bring to if, if maybe you weren't as prepped on a map like Ascent, well, at least Icebox has those reps for M80 and you know yeah, what exactly. they're going to pull out, right? They're going to mm-hmm. pull out that Omen uh, on that map on Icebox as well. But overall, I mean, yes, it was sort of close, but with still a 13 to 8 scoreline where it didn't really look like M80 were really struggling in that fight or in that series, then, you know, you, you do have a little bit of, of hope here for this team. Um, but you are right. It has been fairly slow for core. But overall, I, I still I still think that they flipped the the switch here for M80, and we're finally going to see them back on top. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to my okay. uh, I'm gonna stick to my point for that one as it. well, and uh, and see that M80 is going to be a, a a favorite once again here uh, from now on, uh, especially with the agent changes that we're going to talk about in a bit. <laughs> um, if anything, I think yeah. there's two other small things we could we could note. Uh, the first one, I'm just going to skim through it at least. It's uh, yeah. Fluffy Amers defeating TSM. Uh, honestly, if you're looking at this on paper, there's a lot of people that might think that this may come to a surprise, but I think it's just because you're, you're, um, how do you, how, how, how can I say it? It's just maybe because it's a assigned team. So you're always, yeah, like a big name or more of a hope or yeah, exactly. You're going to lean towards that side. But I think skill wise, both of these teams are very, very close, even neck and neck. Uh, when we're looking at how, uh, how these rosters are, are actually composed here with, with which players and even Fane beat TSM on a 13 to one score line on. Yeah, that's tough. where nothing worked for them, dude. I, I think I saw like um so many instances of like a x versus one that was at the advantage of tsm that they lost in the clutch against like mummy and jonah on that map and it's hard to bounce back from that one at least they still brought it to a third map but it's very hard to bounce back from a 13-1 loss yeah i mean let's 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 do some quick maths right so it was a 14 yep. round game um <laughs> fluffy aim had a 1v2 1v2s a 1v1 and a 1v3 that's yeah. four that's four clutches out of 13 rounds it's like almost quarter of the rounds were just clutches for for fluffy aimers so maybe, maybe, maybe the game was a little bit pretty much yeah pretty much so like maybe the game was a little bit closer than we thought but just they just couldn't close out the key rounds and i mean obviously that's still a bad sign regardless but i mean the other two maps were, were pretty chill i think yeah uh, and then at least if anything like i said it'll go back and forth and i think for these two teams it's always going to be uh you know uh not necessarily struggle but um mm-hmm. there's going to be a lot of even matches when you're actually going into that mid pack right outside of those top yeah. fours that we always mention every week so yeah uh, it's always going to flip uh it's going to go back and forth if you're trying to do predictions or you're trying to count on a certain team to come up on top i think you have more chances to get it right if you go on google and just hit the coin flip and then just just go on either or you know uh but yep. if not that the, the last match that i want to mention is the yfp versus turtle troop because yfp now i mean that the in the first week when it started here for stage two it was like okay well they got they got firepower it works out pretty good now it looks even better because in week three you're also bringing out 
composition changes. Whereas on, uh, I think it was Lotus, you had Jake play Clove, you had Penny on a Neon, and yep. then you had Physic on a Breach. And they looked absolutely awesome against CTR. They still lost the series, but at least they won that map. And Jake had such good impact on a Clove, but I think it's a lot on this combination of this Penny and Breach. And uh, sorry, this Penny on Neon and Physics on Breach. So I want to know your thoughts about this poppy composition here that we that we see currently with this uh with this comp do, do you like it right now uh, on a map like uh, like lotus yeah I, I think i very much like yfp's comp on lotus right now uh, mm. viper okay the double controller meta just feels extremely weird right now in my opinion so that's why a lot of yeah. teams are shifting off of it and they're going into like the double initiators um so that that's that's already like a plus sign for yfp and sorry, in what sense as well? Because yes, I've noticed that as well. There's been more Cyphers coming through too, instead of like a Killjoy. So you can Killjoy. actually add a little bit more lurking capabilities or information you can gather towards this A side without forcing like a Viper to stay behind. But are, are people falling away from, or are people taking a step back from the double controller because of the Viper nerfs? Or is there yes, another exactly. reason why here that you're seeing Viper uh, being pulled out of this comp a little bit more? I, I, I think it's like 80% of the reason, like Viper just feels kind of bad to play right now, to be honest, right? Like the, the committed orb, the committed walls, like the, the lack of the, you know, a single Molotov, like that's that's pretty tough, to be honest. The snake bite, the snake bite nerf's pretty rough. Um, mm -hmm. But beyond that, I think it's just like the other 20% of the coin is, it's just a little overplayed at this point. Like everyone kind of knows the lurk timings. Everyone kind of understands how the comp functions, right? Like they understand the spreads, like something needed to change and people are always going to gravitate to the, you know, the, the, Agents that are on the higher power curve, right? And that's that's like we're looking at Breach, we're looking at Gecko on that map. Like Ova is kind of like, in my opinion, like a lateral change to Omen. I don't okay. think it changes the dynamic too too much. I still prefer the Omen personally, but hey, they're making it work. So shout out to them. But the neon, the neon is really the big thing. And honestly, I well, I'm sure we'll end up circling back to this because we are going to be moving into a new patch. But mm -hmm. I think that this comp that YFP is running right now is they're like I think they're trying to get ahead of the meta and they're going to have a really, really, really nice time on that map because they're already ready to go for the new patch. So they're, they're completely <laughs> chilling. Let's talk about that then. Let's, let's talk about this new patch. Yeah, I want to so, jump into it. All right, let's go. Yeah, th this week and week number four we're going into now, we're already going to play on patch 8.11. So yep. Challengers is able to see the neon changes and also all the duelist changes over the VCT Americas. That's only going to start this weekend only. So this is a, a nice little appetizer into what's to come and, oh, and yeah. let's talk about that right so so you mentioned you know you're getting ready for the meta for yfp neon's gonna have the is gonna have like probably the biggest changes that people are talking about a lot outside of iso but want to yep. go through it one by one so starting with neon here so there's been a few buffs and a few nerfs that came through but overall it seems very positive uh in terms of buffs yeah. i'm just gonna <laughs> read through them right now and i i want to know your thoughts too so um Neon now has almost like an almost instant double slide now to her kit. And I think yes. that's like the biggest thing to talk about. So let's let's start with that. Do you think this agent uh, is do you think the people are overreacting that the fans are overreacting in Valorant now that Neon has almost like an instant double dash? Is it that? No, nah, no, nah, I don't. Yeah, no, nah, it's it's not only the double dash. It's the fact that you are accurate while you are dashing yes. <laughs> and you have two of them is yep. wild it's so yeah. wild to me um but yeah i mean beyond that like the size strafing right like if you think about it if you're a neon player you could hold angles and as soon as you take your initial shot you have like a pseudo jet dash as long as you're holding really tight corners right like because you can yeah, you can just yeah. you can sprint sideways like that's that yeah. was never a mechanic before you always have to sprint forward with neon but now you can go yeah. sideways at the same speed which is kind of quirky in its own way because now it kind of enables like a whole new like way of playing neon like where you can hold tight angles and be out immediately um and then the triple slide with alt is also that new mechanic it, it was only a double slide previously but now the double slide is the standard so it's like they have a triple slide now like that's <laughs> that's wild and and on yeah. top of that you also that's the final point for me is like the regen time for the sprint like the, the stamina i guess if you call, mm -hmm. if you want to call it that um the stamina is only 20 second recharge instead of 60 seconds which is yeah. Also, why? Because now you can go from point A to point B and back to point A and back to point B, and you're pretty much you pretty much have stamina the entire time, realistically. Yeah. Uh, if anything, too, though, some of the buffs that people have been haven't been talking about is her 
concusses are actually come are lasting like a 0.5 a little bit longer and it also yeah. activates and a little faster. bit more quickly so you could be very like you could smother your opponents a lot especially oh, yeah. in these duels and how she can be very quick from an ad strafe and a forward and backwards at the same amount of speed in terms of unit it, it does actually um, add a lot of change to that but the yep. also the when you talk about the accuracy that's pretty much um there, there's no drop off in the accuracy when you're when you're sliding but yeah, the, the, so... the time to shoot when you're pulling out the weapon is also much faster as well not that much faster but it's still faster than the old patch which then oh, means yeah. that a, a neon could really put like a concuss dash in and get your gun up now yep. I, at this point i want to i don't want to really go into the metas yet into like what could counter it or not but like mm -hmm. i feel just looking at the neon on paper for now um it, it does look pretty strong as an agent and i yep. wonder um i wonder which players if you're thinking about it from challenge i might put you on the spot here roy but yeah. if you're looking at players here currently in challengers do you think there's going to be any type of these players that could really take neon to its maximum potential and what i mean by that is there's been some content creator that, that, that has been doing like four dashes nuts. backward dashes and yeah. no <laughs> marshals and stuff so do you think somebody like penny could do this or do you think somebody else right now in in challengers could currently doing uh, could currently do this type of play style I, I think penny could absolutely do it i'm just not sure if he's like the absolute zoomer of the zoomer of neons um, but a person that I that comes to mind when I do think of like the Zoomer Neon is going to be Redux because he's not new to the Neon role. He's played it mm -hmm. previously and he already kind of has a lot of the tech down. So he just needs to get used to the new tech and then, then the double and triple slide. So I think I think Redux is going to be a, a name that comes to mind that it will have like the absolute Zoomer of Neon mechanics. Um, I think there are other people in here as well, like um, <clears throat> like Okeanos will probably probably pick it up as well. He's a bit of a Zoomer. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, there's, there's probably going to be like several good neons, but how fast they, how fast they adjust to the new mechanics is, is going to be a uh, in question for sure. I'm sure they'll, I'm sure yeah. they'll pick it up pretty quickly, but yeah, to, to kind of circle back on your point, that's kind of my final point on this as well. Vince, is like neon is really strong in isolation, but when you mm -hmm. add the breach and when you add the gecko and you add like that extra supportive utility on top of her utility, <laughs> it just feels like on paper at least it feels really really strong so i'm curious to see what these teams are going to be cooking up to be honest yeah uh, and i i can't wait to start seeing that over at emea as well for vcts when mini blue is going to start using that with that breach. oh my god uh, right because yes. we, we've already seen a bit of that uh coming through when they're playing on sunset and mm -hmm. i believe that even they're at the forefront maybe they knew something that we didn't that the other one's gonna get some sort of a buff but we'll we'll get there when we get there we're gonna cross that bridge when we're gonna cross that bridge and i want to talk about more agents that are kind of like op and i've realized yeah. i didn't even put this in my notes but i i think the one that that's the elephant in a room is the changes oh. that iso yep. has gone most recently and it looks like the the changes for iso has been so strong that i don't really even notice if these had anything that was like weakened in this kit like his walls stayed the same if i'm not mistaken the vulnerability yep. still stays the same so yep. now it's just like really the the double tap mechanics of this there's been some great i want to talk about um, uh the map rotation actually for for this week yeah so baby the foresee yeah, exactly the foreseeable future is that you know abyss came out but it's not going to be picked mm -hmm. until p potentially like week number six or into playoffs, or playoffs. That's tbd but if anything the biggest thing is haven is definitely back so breeze is out split's gonna stay haven's in with no changes intuition is like the complete opposite i feel like okay we're gonna have bo3s that are gonna last like an hour long hmm. like i feel like everyone's gonna run it down oh like the whole bo3 is gonna yeah, down. yeah 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 <laughs> like, okay, i feel like okay, we're, okay. everyone's about to run it down right like we might okay. see a massive resurgence for sage and it's a name we have mm. not even mentioned. We haven't even said the word Sage in, in years, it feels like. That is true. And it's about time. That is true. Because, like, the slows are going to, like, do you have two of them? It's probably the only, like, real stall you have against a potential rush meta. Like, do you think they have good chances against a team like Oxygen with these changes so far? No. <laughs> Next. No, I, I think I, Next. Oxygen... <laughs> <laughs> Oxygen is like the worst team to be going up against in this current meta. I think there's a chance. I just don't know what that chance is. That, that's the thing. If there's a chance, it's I just think it's 20. Is it, again. 
I mean, dude, my mate, shout out to that man. Dude, that, that guy's career has been so awesome to watch. He's just always up and down. I love it. Um, I, I don't know. I'm still going to go turtle tubes, but then, I would I not be surprised say, at all if this came out on top. another week of Freud being like, oh, this looks so good here for Blinn, but turtle tubes still going to win. Turtle troops, man. They're they're they've shown time and time again favorite esports freeze. Like they're they're the best team. That's just what it is. Uh, Bensley and I are great yappers, and we've gone over the time. So if you want to cast the rest of the episode, check out the rest of the video in the social links below. It's a new patch, it's a new week, it's a new day for Valorant Challengers North America. Welcome back everyone, we're on week four and things are changing a little bit. I'm very excited for what's gonna be this number week four where things might change as they have been for the second split. I'm your host Dryad and today I'm joined by Wyatt and Marks on the analyst desk and also on the casting booth. And guys, uh, let's talk about first about the points that we have Wyatt because it seems like split one was that, uh, was that, very standard whoever we think is going to win is going to win but this second split has been a lot of new surprises yeah for sure it's been pretty crazy with yfp having a terrible stage one and now looking phenomenal in stage two blin the new team to the challengers stages they qualified in through the relegation tournament and they've looked really impressive core yeah. having a tough time it's been a total shakeup from what we expected given stage one's results, like you said. And it, at this point, we still don't know, Marks, who is that number one team. As we were saying, that split number one was M80, M80. Everybody was talking about M80 and how they were going to make it to Ascension. But now we see this Oxygen team that is looking unstoppable, as you see on that first group, the only one that's 3 0, and on the other side, Turtle Troop 3 0 as well. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the whole Oxygen idea what they were trying to build when they were putting together their roster for this year of NA challengers I mean to me this kind of makes sense oxygen kind of came into us with the intention of building a team that is going to make it all the way well m80 felt like they lost a couple of their pieces and so you know they're starting to piece things together but coming up against the powerhouse that is oxygen now like oxygen are a very dominant team in this split and I mean, I know we're gonna have the chance to talk about them a lot today because let's take a look at how this week four matches are gonna look like. We have a lot of matches that I feel like they're a little bit harder to predict, but why? But in general, I feel like at least for this first two matches, I would say even the four that we have for today and tomorrow, you can kind of guess who's gonna win. We're definitely going into this first game, obviously expecting Oxygen to win this. They had a couple of off matches in stage one, but since the midseason cup, they've just been on a tear. They haven't lost a single game. Winthrop have looked okay in this stage two, despite being one and two. They kept it really close against MXS. They lost one, two there. So listen, maybe they can keep this game a bit close, but you have to imagine Oxygen are gonna take this. They are without a doubt the massive favorites insane team and in general marks as we get to see uh, all the other matches uh, yeah we're talking about the, the favorites today and the favorites that might win these the matches for that week number four but there's something that we need to talk about and is that the patch is different there's gonna be new things coming up there's a uh, breeze is gonna be gone we're gonna see haven again which i miss very much this is my favorite map marks and I I want to know what the teams have been cooking because they were already cooking with the patch before, so I don't know what they're going to be doing today. I feel like there's probably one of those situations of just too many chefs in the kitchen because obviously, you know, week four changes kind of coming in here with Haven coming back in. Breeze, see you later. Uh, Breeze honestly needs a little bit more work before that kind of goes out there. But Haven coming back in is going to be a really interesting. Of course, these teams have been definitely thinking about how they want to play Haven. And on top of that, too, lately, at least in LA Ch NA Challengers, a lot of teams have been trying out new ideas. We're seeing a lot more rotation of 
different agents come into the map pool. And so kind of like you said, Dryad, uh, I feel like we're probably not going to get that stock standard Haven composition. I think there's a real opportunity. We're going to see some pretty unique stuff this week. I just, I really, really want to see Haven. I'm, I'm going back all the way to the old G2, the one with Shazam, when they were playing the Neon on Haven. I'm like, guys, please, somebody, somebody go back to the comp, please. I have a vision that this could work right now because there's so many cool ideas. And like you were saying, a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of ideas that are coming up and challenges that we don't even see in tier one. And a lot of them are really working out for these teams. Everybody finding what is working out, what is best to play, what is maybe something that they're going to have to change eventually, but talking about the creativity let's talk about the match that we have to start us off it's going to be oxygen against winthrop and two teams that to be fair they've been keeping it pretty standard wyatt i would say when it comes to these ideas these compositions and that way they've been getting some wins obviously oxygen more than winthrop though for sure winthrop have looked pretty good this stage honestly i said it earlier but despite being one and two i think they're playing better valorant than they did in stage one we saw in just their last match the man on the furthest left infiltrator their duelist was definitely stepping up for the team he's yeah. beginning to look really fantastic and it's something that you need to keep doing especially when it's a match against oxygen do you know this is the favorite team and you're gonna have to have a dominant performance from the beginning which a lot of the times it does rely on those duelist marks and that initiator or that duelist rather that is going to be infiltrated and that support around them because winthrop they've made changes since we've been seeing them for the last couple of weeks and they've been looking really good with these ideas it's just a matter of when do they start getting the wins with these new roster and I think that going up against Oxygen is a really good litmus test, if you will, about whether or not these changes, whether or not things are starting to work out, because Oxygen, like we've been talking about, has been on a tear. And the things from Winthrop are really starting to look like they're clicking together. We're seeing that support come in from Infiltrator, allowing that duelist really to just pop off. We're seeing some of the highlights right now, and it really does feel like it's just the Infiltrator show uh, going off there. So Winthrop University, there's still a lot of potential there, but not. It, it's, it's still a very hard match you're going up against oxygen and we talk about it. it is the pressure that this team has even if they're that collegiate team that we said towards the beginning where we didn't really know where to place them they have proven that they're really good but that means that the new additions they have a lot of pressure to not only fill the shoes of those who left like moves but also to perform to the level that we've seen in tier one and tier two and that is screw face for example wyatt who we see being very honest about it, just trying his best, has been in a couple of different teams and has been really trying to get that success. And we're all hoping that it's going to be with Winthrop. Yeah, Screwface has definitely been a player with a chip on his shoulder, trying to find his footing in a consistent roster, has been shuffling around. Some teams didn't feel he was the best fit. A lot of people are questioning how he hasn't really found a team to be with consistently because he seems yeah. so motivated, driven. And in this tweet, I mean, he's mentioning the back-to-back -back losses that they had there in that second part, doing their best to tighten up week four versus Oxygen. But frankly, this schedule for Winthrop has been so brutal. They got a win against a uh, much improved Fluffy Aimers. And then after that, they go up against YFP, who are insane in stage two. Then they go up against MXS, who everyone knows is a massive favorite. And now they're going up against Oxygen. Like, that is, that is messed up. That is a <laughs> terrible run of teams they have to go up against. Yeah, it's not easy at all. And they've been trying their best. Last week, we got uh, we got to see them taking a map away from Moy Shopify. And as you were saying, that's a team that is very good, very strong. We've seen them be at the top two, top three, even in the groups or even overall. So it's a lot of pressure. That's what I'm saying. It's a lot of pressure marks for what this Winthrop squad is going to do, especially because now we get to talk about the other side. Let's talk about Oxygen, the favorite for a reason. They might be the favorite team in challengers to make it to ascension at least as of right now obviously things can change but this team has six matches where they've been undefeated and they have a map record of 12-1 as of right now since the mid-season cup it's insane what these guys are doing yeah, I mean, I said it before and I'll say it again. The whole point of building this roster was simply just to win. And I feel like 
in this split, I mean, talk about going on a tear. Oxygen has just been tearing things up. And quite frankly, across the board, I've been very impressed by each one of these individual players bringing so much to the team and seeing the synergy work out uh, has just been fantastic. Obviously, I think Verno is one of those players who on that initiator has been getting so much value for the team, but Redux as well. I mean, you know, we talked about Infiltrator a lot, but Redux is just so fun to watch, so dynamic on that jet pick and just the duelist pick in general. And so I think that that is a huge reason why Oxygen have been having so much success lately. They, every time that I get the chance to talk about Redux, I will because this guy is insane. It, he's been playing since he last year when we saw him joining. Everybody was like, "How is he going to do?" We we seen him playing ranked. How is he going to perform with the team? Is he going to be disciplined? Is he going to have an ego? What is he going to feel like? And he is this player that has been learning throughout. We've heard about him and, and we've heard in interviews where one week he's like super confident, making fun of the other teams, and the other week after they lose, they're like, "Okay, we're going to be." We're going to be respectful. We're going to just play the match and see where that takes us. And that's kind of the growth that we're seeing from Redux, one of the youngest players that we have in Challengers and one that has a lot of, of promise when it comes to what is going to be when he gets a chance to play in Tier 1. But as of right now, again, that is why they are the favorites, Wyatt. And on top of that, you have a the squad that, as Marx was saying, is just full with potential and full with different ways to set each other, each other up for success. Redux has definitely in part been able to be a standout duelist here in Challengers because of those pieces you're mentioning around him. I love the way that this roster was constructed, having the veterans in Dapper and Mitch who've been competing since 2020. And then you bring in these young upcoming players that have an immense amount of potential, Redux, Verno, Scuba as well. It's just such a, an exciting time always to watch Redux play because he's absolutely on the top end of duelists that are risk takers, right? Like he will go for those re-swings, those aggressive peaks way more often than you'll see other duelists take. And given how high his uh, mechanical skill ceiling is, he gets away with these crazy plays so consistently. And it's a, always a risk when you have that duelist that is so aggressive. It's like, hey, when when do we have to pull you back to make sure that you're you're staying in the lane? It's not you're not going in, you're inting. But instead, Redux, I feel like it's so good at finding that balance between the two, between the aggression and also just playing back and supporting the team, being there for the numbers when they need it. But I'm really hoping that we get to see some fun agents from him. Let's jump into the map select. Let's see, we're gonna be hated. I'm praying for a Haven. I don't know if we're gonna get it. It's kind of early still. And Mark, speaking of the maps, is gonna be loaded bind and split what do you make of them oh i'm honestly i'm i'm 100 with you dryad i'm sad that haven didn't get picked again of course the one week it comes back and no we're not going to be getting Please. any haven uh but i mean just across the board given all the statistics that have been kind of coming in here oxygen 100 look really good on a lot of these maps i want to focus in on the lotus uh obviously they picked this map and quite frankly they look like they've been doing a fantastic job i would have said that this is their top map if it wasn't for sunset which they currently remain undefeated but winthrop university doing a really 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 smart job making sure that they take that map out completely so they don't even have to try and knock oxygen on sunset and we're gonna see what's gonna happen in those maps a Wyatt because I'm wondering if this especially this two maps of Lotus and Bind it gives you it gives us an opportunity to see those new agents have been agents that are looking so much stronger maybe bringing back the neon meta that we saw on Lotus or maybe staying a little bit of the same and the reason why I'm thinking it and it and it's not something that I think right when we see a new patch coming in but it's because all these tier two teams they have also been scrambling tier one teams against tier two teams and they're all testing these new things so I feel like there's a possibility that we might see something new. If we see something new, it'll definitely be from the Winthrop side. Since Oxygen started playing this really exciting Clove comp in the Midseason Cup, they haven't lost yet. They have three wins in a row, with Scuba being this extremely aggressive component on that agent that allows you to be that aggressive. So I'm expecting to see that same thing from them, which is still new. I mean, they're one of the teams, one of the few teams that we've seen so far in NA integrating the, the new Smokes agent. 
I, I really like to see that clove. I feel like, again, just bringing back the creativity that we've seen for these teams, there's some that have really nailed it and figure out how they're going to play this clove and how they're going to play these different agents, like the deadlock as well. And some that are still kind of learning, learning from the others, learning from themselves. Uh, but Marks, I want to put you in the spot here because I know you do a lot of collegiate and you follow collegiate a lot more than we do. So I want to ask you, what is it going to take for Winthrop to win this match against Oxygen? Oh my goodness, that's like asking how that guy who's supposed to push the boulder up the mountain, how is he finally going to be free of that curse? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's his name. Yeah. It, was, it was something in there, but it's it's going to be really hard. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, Winthrop look really promising in the whole Seaval circuit. They've been doing a fantastic job. I mean, if you just look at their VLR, you can tell right off the bat, like, these guys are in it to win it. But then as soon as we kind of go into this challenger scene, this is where we're starting to see them really get pushed up against some of that top tier caliber talent, honestly. And so it's going to be really tough, but you know, they got to be a little bit more cohesive, I think, because they're in the C Val scene. I think that they're able to get away with just a little bit more just since they aren't playing up against the level of, you know, solid ground that Oxygen is kind of coming into this with. And that just foundational component, especially too for these players who are really good, could just really make this difficult. Yeah, and that's what going to be when, uh, one of the toughest things going up against them too when you're talking about that team cohesion, just because this Oxygen squad have been playing together now with the Dapper Edition for what, like eight months, nine months straight or something since the beginning of the off season. And it's a Winthrop that just made these changes, right? And were they good changes? I think for sure. But is that yeah. really enough time to go up against a team that's so experienced together now? It's going to be tough. And I feel like in a way, and just going back to the tweet that we show from Screwface, that's the pressure that he likes. He likes having to play against the best and having to perform against the best really show how close you are. Even if it was a, a, a universe where Winthrop does not get a win, it's making sure that the match is close, making sure that they show the oxygen, they're not invincible and there's a way to break them. But honestly, I feel like it's not going to be easy at all. A one, a one way to do it is definitely going to be those, bringing those surprises, bringing that slight difference. I just wonder how much creativity we're going to see, Marks, because when I remember Moops was playing for this team, he was was the one that was bringing the ideas. He was the one playing the rain on once in a while. And now without him, I don't know how much uh, Silence and Screwface are willing to play these different compositions and how much success they found in them when they play them in scrims. That's, that's one of those hard things to really balance, right? Like, ooh, do we try something new here? Maybe it'll give us an edge. Maybe we can catch our opponents off guard. That could be really fun. That could be really cool. But then on the other hand, uh-oh, this is not working out at all, but we've already locked into this composition for this entire map. And so now we just kind of have to stick to our guns and then it could go really south really fast. And I kind of agree with you, Dryad. I think that they're going to stick just a little bit more to what they know, just because there's a little bit more of this unknown factor kind of coming in with this squad. I mean, sure, they could change things up, but when teams usually change things up, you can tell that the other team just kind of gets a read on it and then just steamrolls mm -hmm. them. Yeah, again, for the people that might just be tuning in, we are on the ISO neon buff patch. And as much as I would love to see some teams trying those agents out, I mean, also with Reina buff too, the new dismiss is really strong. It's so, <laughs> it's so good. Like the repositions you can have now are crazy. Would I love yeah. to see those agents being played today? Would it be fun? Would it be silly? <laughs> yes. Is it likely? Sadly, no. <laughs> because the teams just haven't had a lot of time on this patch. Yeah, do you really want to risk it at this point in the stage? Probably not, especially for a team like Winthrop that really need wins at this point. But would I love to see it? Yes. Hmm. I so I get your point, and I get you saying probably not. But have you considered that this is Challengers NA, and they like to get silly more that often than not? That is very uh, Have you true. considered? <laughs> I feel like if we're going to see it in any region, in any tier two, we're 100% going to see it here first. I actually saw the Fnatic today were running what the Turtle Troop composition that they've been running for a while. It's so funny. Turtle Troop have actually created the new meta of Deadlock. <laughs> Adder has changed the game. <laughs> This is what everybody predicted, by the way, that the, the tier two win an A, we're gonna, this is what Fnatic is running now. Things things are going crazy, but yeah, the creativity is coming from this tier two and A. So we're gonna see if we're gonna see that today or if it's gonna be a little bit more of the same. Let's jump into the agent select of this first map of Lotus that we're gonna have. Let's see if it's gonna be 
that neon maybe oh there's a neon there's a neon there's a neon <laughs> there Wyatt, it is. Wyatt take there, it you see <laughs> it's time to get silly oh my god I mean we saw YFP recently they've been playing with a neon on Lotus and just going with this death ball approach where they yeah. play 4-1 they have their cypher work one part of the map and the other four are just running around together maybe we'll see something similar here from Winthrop this is gonna be so silly and i'm here for it i'm excited <laughs> to watch this it, it, it's one of those things where you know i talk about that decisional balance the one thing i also forgot to think about was winthrop if they genuinely aren't sure whether or not this is going to be a win or anything like that oh maybe we just try something new and see how it goes especially with these crazy new patch notes so looks like winthrop will be doing just that getting both the iso and the neon coming in on this first map why this this is gonna be something <laughs> I mean, listen, anyone who's played ranked since this patch has had at least one moment where they were prepared to take their keyboard and destroy their <laughs> monitor with it because of an ISO shield peeking a corner. You break it and then he kills you because there's a neon with the alt just running around and you can't hit the shot. It is so obnoxious. I'm excited to see if it's going to be equally as annoying in pro play. <laughs> My bet is probably yes, but uh, you know, I, I'd like to think that Oxygen uh, will have at least done a little bit of preparation for this, especially too, knowing that this was going to be the patch. They had to at least discuss that this could potentially happen. For sure. I mean, I, I wonder how many teams have just sent it on these new agents in scrims, how often these guys are actually really playing against this. But this Winthrop starting things off really slow here, just. Making a little bit of their presence known towards rubble, but I'm just gonna fall back. Make sure they're not getting flanked. They don't have any trips watching this area of the map, so they want to go for a bit of a reclear. Maybe go for a full B split here, actually, as well. Looks like they're setting up for it. Redox spots them out now. Understands what's going on. Throws down the paint shells. Flashpoint not gonna get anything. A dizzy scent flying as well. Just onto the other side. All the utility gets utilized just to make sure that it stops this potential death ball. But Winthrop, I'm not really engaged just yet. Silence just on the other side. A little bit of a satchel. Not going to do any damage anymore thanks to this new patch. Uh, but now it's going to be Winthrop now getting this spike down. But Oxygen already ready to get this retake underway. Yeah, four players stacked up the stairs right now. Mitch has two flashes just rotating over there. Now they're going to be able to explode out of this area at the map. Trader hanging out up top. Flashpoint gonna be good here. Aftershock gets sent out, but Screwface already getting Mitch. Screwface gets yet another one. A little bit of a trade onto the site. Dapper able to find that kill right through that shield. Wasn't fully activated just quite yet. Scuba now coming in from up above. Nicely gonna shut that one down. Verno now the last one alive in this 1v2 scenario. Sends out the wingman just to be a little bit of a distraction, but this crossfire is gonna be too easy. Winthrop University, they get that first pistol round. I like the rotations around the map there, a little bit of that early A presence. And you mentioned it, that utility that they were able to draw out of oxygen on B only to fall off, go back through tree. Those are some really nice rotations from them and a great way to start this map off. Of course, this would be, it goes without saying, a massive upset win for them if they manage to pull this off against oxygen, who are just looking like the most dominant team in stage two right now. If they get the win, I'm saying it's because of Neon and ISO. That's what I'm saying right now, pre-nerf. But already it's so fast. Infiltrator goes in with Bulldog. ADS going to find Redux. Now putting pressure onto Mitch as well. Screwface just watching the other angle there. Actually bought up here. Has a Vandal as well. And uh, it's just ring around the Rosie just on the other side of this door. Mitch going to be now going for a... Well, never mind. Not going to be swinging around, but things slow down just for a second. Winthrop University... They are a little bit more spread out, but they're now committed here. Screwface goes around the corner, able to at least find one, but Dapper finds that trade. Infiltrator down to one HP as well. Nicely gonna go as well, able to find Dapper just on the other side. Scuba, and uh, actually, everyone's just gonna collapse on the site. When they're really just taking their time there, slowing the game down after getting out to rubble, just trying to wait, bait out some peaks, and take fights at the opportune times. And they get a pretty clean eco win there. And with a couple pistols bought up for oxygen in that round, look at the spread of light armors that they have and recognizing that That's Jerk cool. has the outlaw. So 
Going to be able to one-shot a couple players here from Oxygen. <laughs> you say the outlaw, but actually I'm looking at Infiltrator right now with the Bucky. Especially once again, this Neon Patch. That could be extremely useful with the Power Slide, but not going to be aggressive outside of A this time. Oxygen, they force them back. That Breach is so good early in that A fight to take the area on defense. They do exactly that, and now it is that 1-4. The death ball with this double duelist, with the breach, with the neon. Trap gets shot down. A couple of peaks going around the wall, gonna get set up. And now just moving in on site. Mitch can't do anything to slow down this push. Spike should be able to get planted quickly, but look at this. Already oxygen. They've made their way in. Infiltrator watching so far forwards finds Scuba. Things start to fall apart for Oxygen as they continue to try and make something happen. Screwface still getting aggressive with it. Redux has to back off, forced away. But look at this, Infiltrator just going in deep, really just using their body to make sure that Redux is able to find that kill. And suddenly, Verno down to a 1v2. The Outlaw, as well as that Guardian, still available. But Verno has no idea where anyone on this site is. Decides to actually opt out and just save this rifle into the next round. The Death Ball wins yet again for Winthrop. And, I mean, Withrop almost got way too silly. At first, I was like, ooh, this is, hold on, this is kind of cool. They're pushing through Baby Door. ISO used his little laser through the wall that I don't know the name of because <laughs> I've never seen an ISO in a game before. And they had a flash sign at the same time, but then, yeah, that overpush may be a bit much. But regardless, it's a bonus round converted for them. 3-0, big lead already for the underdog. As I Google ISO ability names, <laughs> give me a second here. I was just about to say, given how things are going, that one might be a good piece of information to keep in the back pocket moving forwards. Ah, oh, yes, already. the undercut. Yeah, everybody <laughs> watching definitely knew that ISO's little ability was called the undercut. It's time to learn together. <laughs> Put the learning tag, oh sorry, educational tag on the Twitch stream right now. Screwface, already moving forwards, has the double tap already popped. It's so aggressive. Dapper gonna be holding things really close there, at least. Looking for something with the Bucky, will find Silence. A Screwface already onto the back of the site. As soon as that trap goes down, it's gonna be a hard fought battle. Yep, okay, Dapper goes down. Page shells get tossed in by Redux. He's able to at least find Screwface. Things are just getting a little bit crazy on this site. Finally, it's like going to get planted. Redux tries to stop it, but Jerk is ready for it. Just so aware at this point. And now it's down to this 2v3. Oxygen, not sure whether or not they want to go in, but Fault Line says that yes, let's push in just a little bit more. It's going to be a lot of utility getting tossed out here, but Winthrop just waiting it out. We have an idea on where these final two agents are. The slide going to be coming through. Wingman gets shot. Infiltrator tapping it. Flashpoint goes yet again. Mitch actually able to find one, but immediately traded back down to a 1v1. All of a sudden, Mitch actually wow. wins that out for Oxygen. And just like that, Oxygen get their first on the board. Mitch has really stepped it up recently. I think as far as that individual play at times in stage one, just a little bit too lackluster for the team, but has really started to show out in some of these crucial moments on this eco round. And at this moment here, I really liked from Winthrop that they slowed things down again. They found good moments to do that. They drew out all of this utility, but the gunfights just don't go their way, despite having the superior weaponry as well. And it was so funny too, because it looked like they were just waiting for an opportunity really to pounce on the rest of the defenders, but no, such good utility usage. Makes that one work. Uh oh. Oh my Send god. Send to the gulag. <laughs> <laughs> Screwface in the 1v1, yeah. It's a little, little bit difficult when that shield is available. Scuba not even going to have an opportunity. And speaking of, laser beam going to be activated. Palpatine flying into the back of the site there. But Oxygen are more than happy to just give that one up for free. A little bit of an awkward buy here, but still, that spike goes down. Yeah, I'm getting PTSD for my ranked games. They're just <laughs> brute forcing it into the site. They make Scuba disappear. So even if Screwface loses that, they could just go where he's going to reappear and get the kill. This is a fast attempt at a retake, though, from Oxygen with a showstopper. Looking around for the corner, able to at least find a one. Now the Rolling Thunder going to be underway as everyone going to be pushing in. There was someone on the spike, but immediately gets taken out. Nicely able to find one as well. Oh, just sticking the defuse, but she doesn't care for a second. Hiding out inside of that ruse. And yeah, even though everyone collapses, Oxygen get that second. It's going to be some serious damage to the oxygen economy here. Going to be a couple awkward buys. 
And now one thing that we haven't discussed yet is the tilt factor that this comp from Winthrop <laughs> creates. Two times already, Mitch has died because he shot Screwface with the shield up, so he lost the duel, which is just significant hey. mental damage. <laughs> yep. Hey, you know what? On the other side, too, we might... Okay, oh all right. Oh my god, what a <laughs> shot. <laughs> These shields, this is, this is just something else. This is completely unconventional is Screwface continuing to look for more. Bruno, the only other anchor onto this I site, but exactly. with that shield back activated, things get more complicated, especially to the neural theft. But Verno actually wins that duel out. Fault line gonna go a little bit wide, so Verno finds yet another. Sees the teleport onto the site, doesn't matter, taps Jerk's head. And now, just have to deal with one more onto the site. The crossfire is gonna be good. Now it's all up to this neon. Infiltrator gonna look for something, but there's just too much utility. Verno gets the ace to shut it down as Oxygen. They tie up the scoreboard. It was a fantastic start for Winthrop, but it feels like things are beginning to devolve just a bit. The swing timings there to try and trade for each other were just so off. That first fight taken. Their breach here. You can just see how late Nasi is on this attempt to trade. Verno's already more than prepared to take that second fight. And a timeout is going to be taken a, a good time here, honestly, because Winthrop have two rounds now that were extremely winnable that they probably should have won, that they've thrown away, and now that was so sloppy. So a good time here to take a little bit of a mental reset. Yeah, I was going to say on that last round, you talked about the tilt factor, but there's also the overheating factor. And uh, especially, too, with the way that this composition runs itself, the let's just go faster and faster and run over our opponents. It's so easy just to then isolate yourself and allow your opponents to find these timings where they can find a 1vx scenario. And it feels like Oxygen were really starting to lean into that on that last round. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's so dangerous from Redux too, as a side note, to pick up the Operator when you're playing against this ISO. I mean, Screwface hit that crazy first shot, but even if he yes. didn't, I mean, what, what, Redux gets the shot, breaks the shield, and still, still goes down? <laughs> he picks the Operator back up here, they recover it, and I'm just waiting to see if that ends up being a situation he finds himself in. And keep in mind too, Screwface just one away from getting that kill contract back online. Could make things a little bit uncomfortable. A good flashpoint at least. Scuba's able to find one. Scuba the redemption arc. They will take Screwface out. That's gonna be the double duelist comp completely shut down. Cyber Cage goes up as well just to deny any of that space. And Winthrop University, they've lost their two largest chess pieces, but are at least able to find Verno. Yeah, jerk trying to make some space over towards A, but Mitch on the corner should just be shutting the round down at this point. Looking so solid here individually the mechanics look sharp today and even though jerk gets that one all the way over onto this a site it's all but over because oxygen they've got that spike locked down onto b and quite frankly this round was pretty much just a result of scuba being able to just overpower that double duelist he's been a player that i think has deserved a shot on a tier one team for years at this point he has been one of the best mechanical fragging controller players that I've seen since all the way back to his days on Pittsburgh Knights. <laughs> and, you know, with Clove's addition to the game, this controller that offers the ability to play aggro, to take fights, get the reheals, you know, with the ultimate, obviously, to revive yourself. I think it just lends itself perfectly to a player like Scuba. And it's just exactly what we see right there. And you talked about it a little bit too, you know, Oxygen deciding to go with this clove in here makes a ton of sense. And once again, kind of talking about how NA challengers can influence all the way up to Fnatic. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see more of these teams try and utilize that clove, especially understanding that the frag power that it lends is just so much better than like an Omen, for example. For sure. I think it's about time we're getting a big shakeup in the meta. We're going to be seeing more clove. We're seeing a lot more deadlock. And obviously, with all of these duelist buffs, again, I just wonder how many teams are actually scrimming with this. How many times <laughs> Oxygen have ran into this in the past couple of weeks? If this is actually going to be a big shakeup, if we're going to see in challenges this week, not just Winter, but other teams just sending it, trying both of these duelists out. Screwface, kill contract now available. 
and you can actually see the rotation from Oxygen. They're so aware that that could happen again, where you just get yoinked out of the site, that uh, they're playing so far back, but inadvertently that's given so much space for Winthrop University, and so they just take that C site nice and easy, and we'll be able to get the spike down. Yeah, these game plans from Winthrop are pretty straightforward, right? I mean, they just have the agents that can fast hit the site. They've done it on the majority of the rounds. Being able to scale into the site with that impenetrable wall from ISO that goes forward. Thrash here for the retake, though, from Oxygen. Five versus five. Well, actually, it's going to be a 1v1 oh screw face God, using the kill contract. Looking for it. Yeah, Dapper didn't even have an opportunity, but the retake from Oxygen is going to be underway. A nice little sashling just around the end there. So Redux finds one, and it's going to push them out, actually, into the direction. And yeah, Oxygen has kind of come in, and they've got a broom in their hands, sweeping the rest of the site up. Now it's all down to Screwface and Jerk, trying to spray that one down, but they stick the defuse. And just like that, Oxygen find another. Right now, it's just running away, but Jerk able to at least carry that rifle forwards. The plant spot just became so awkward for Winthrop, having it back towards the stairs with the thrash and the rolling thunder from Oxygen coming back in on the That's retake that just forced them totally out of the sight, so they have no angle on the spike. Just all too easy for the defuse, despite Screwface now being 2-0 with the ultimates. <laughs> Also, dude, Screwface is nine kills already, and given how easy it is for Iso to get that ultimate, I, I'm imagining we're going to be seeing a lot more of that. Trying to go for a fast take of Rubble or Winter, but if they do, they're going to have to deal with Redux Inferno here. Here comes the utility. They're trying to bust out of the door. Redux smartly backing out of there. Uses both those satchels. A little bit slower from Winthrop this time. A little bit more of an emphasis. Push into tree. The undercut tossed in there. A molly comes out just to make sure that it denies any of the space, but Infiltrator has already made their way inside. Be the wingman just to clear things out as well, but it's an excellent little flash that's going to come around the corner, and yeah, able to escape thanks to that fast lane. Redux still holding down the site, and the call gets made. Winthrop University now going to be moving over to this B side. Dapper going to be advancing forwards and catch the silence off guard here. Now the sport's coming through. Screwface still on the back line, though, at least able to find one. But it's now the last member left standing in this 1v4. Decides to try it anyways, but this is going to be a lot of utility, and Dapper gets the spray down. So Oxygen, they find their sixth. These rounds that aren't fast hits have really devolved for Winthrop. Things just not falling into place. Players having different ideas of where they're attempting to go. The positioning just getting really, really awkward for them. And we see it again there. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely looking for this team to be able to play the rotate game a bit more in these rounds with the Neon. It's obviously, the speed of the rotates is something that it offers, but those are the situations so far where they've definitely been struggling the most. At this point, Oxygen have just given up peeking that angle, <laughs> just knowing that what could be yeah, on the other definitely. side. Do it's not just play not that. Worth it. nah. <laughs> Already, it's going to be the attack moving through. Ruse gets utilized. A lot of utility getting tossed in here. The shield already broken as well is going to be huge. Mitch uses that flashpoint. Dapper actually able to find one. Dapper swings out, but immediately gets shot down. Now it's just going to be a gunfight with Winthrop usually coming out on top. Scuba at least able to find one. Everybody's so low, wow. and it's just going to be a firing squad from oh. Scuba alone to shut down all of Winthrop. A 4K from Scuba to close that round. He's just so lethal mechanically. I love how they've integrated the Clove into their game plan. This cage from Dapper was so cool, too. He was able to fight the common Omen TP spot up on the box with the cages, keeping him completely safe, keeping him completely covered. And already on this attacker side of map, Oxygen are just running away with it here, making it so evident why this is their go-to pick. And this is so hard because, once again, at this point, Winthrop University, they use this composition, but it feels like they've revealed all of their hands on what they want to do. And Oxygen are just doing such a good job at matching that and completely shutting it down. Yeah, definitely. It seems like Winthrop believe in the buffs to these agents, that they are strong, but just haven't had enough time with them yet. Ooh, it's just infiltrator. this big C hit from them again. At least able to get one. Drive pop, looking to 
Execute some people. Dapper going off this weird angle, but it's actually Scuba again in the back line. Does get shot down, but Infiltrator's still alive. This is the lightning clearing out that smoke. Paint shells get tossed in, but at this point, Winthrop, they have it down. A little bit of a showstopper available here. Oh, it's going up top, and Redux at least able to find one as Verno sweeps in from the side, catches the back, suddenly down to this 1v1. Infiltrator versus Verno. At this point, Verno is so aware, spots that neon out. Gonna be dancing around these pillars. The slide, though. Oh, the slide accuracy is too darn good. Infiltrator wins that out with Winthrop getting four. Finally, one of the big C hits working. That has been the name of the game for them. I mean, just slamming into the site, which obviously is really effective with this comp. This goes here. They just don't have a lot of layers to the game oh, plan yes, yet. That goes there. And perhaps when they have more time with this comp, when more teams <laughs> figure things out as to what you can do with it, how you can get the maximum of it, we'll see it become more effective. But yeah, right now it is pretty one note. Actually, Screwface once again has that kill contract available. It's so quick that it's back online and yeah, Oxygen already have all sorts of protocols ready just in case that gets activated. And even though Screwface won those the last time, wasn't enough to actually win the round for the team. And uh, Redux it's spotting a little bit of information me. is going to back off, but gets oh. stuck into the kill contract. Will he go three Redux for three? Versus Screwface looking for it. Redux actually wins that out. Plan doesn't quite work. Verna was watching us on the other side. Jerk spinning around. Will actually use the Neural Theft. Redux still able to escape, use the Paint Shells to deter just for a second, but it is a paranoia that makes it impossible for Infiltrator to see anything. And that's a friendly paranoia too, as Redux just anchors down the site. Jerk trying to stay alive, able to find two, but Oxygen just so prepared, so ready for this. They find themselves 8-4 in this half. Uh, Redux is just way too sick. Screwface finally met his match in one of the best <laughs> duelists we have here in Challengers. I like the idea there from Winthrop. It was cool. You know, they get that kill contract. They make one player disappear, and then they have the Neon and the Breach to try and fast scale into the site. Well, the defenders are minus one, but it all just goes awry. It gets way too chaotic for them in the moment, and they can't find the resolve to clean things up and actually take the round. And now Oxygen already with eight on defense the less favored side on lotus you have to imagine here they should be able to close things out winthrop with a huge uphill battle and this is going to be so interesting because i want to see how this composition is going to work on the defense for winthrop we're already seeing a little bit of a combination from the initiator and the neon but leaving iso actually all alone while jerk anchors down to this other site I would have expected to see a little bit more aggression, but it's actually pretty static from Winthrop thus far. Yeah, they just have a trap play set up with that stun from the Breach Infiltrator jiggling for information. And if he saw someone, it would have uh, gotten triggered, excuse me. But not going to be the case as Oxygen slowly contact towards A. Pressure on Jerk. Making their way onto the site. Jerk still hanging out in the back. Yeah, Infiltrator already in here. It's an excellent little flash, but Mitch at least able to find one with the Aftershock. Redux, though, isn't done. Swings at the back. Infiltrator says they had enough. 22 HP left. The swing is going to be good from Scuba. And suddenly it's more chaotic on at the side. Silence coming around. Scuba's still able to find that somehow. And uh-oh, Screwface has a shield. Doesn't matter. Dapper wins that one. And Oxygen, they get that pistol round. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. Every time I see Screwface go down while he has the shield active, it kind of warms my heart a little bit for all the times <laughs> that I haven't been able to make that happen myself and I just start to rage so hard. It feels like vindication for me as a viewer. <laughs> Not cathartic. to be biased here or anything, but yes, it is very cathartic. Oh, man. And I, honestly, I think this is one of those things that we're starting to see right now where Oxygen despite the shield, are still able to find the kill on the screw face pretty consistently. And that's making it a lot more difficult for this ISO to get as much value, uh, specifically in a lot of these gun duels. For sure, this is a huge trap play from Winthrop that Oxygen might walk into. There's a paranoia. The breach utility is there. Screwface as well had a lineup from Waterfall where he wanted to use the undercut, if I remember the ability name correctly. <laughs> <You got> <laughs> Perfect. So Oxygen in danger here, maybe, despite having the gun advantage. 
Want to see. It just depends on if they pull the trigger on the C site here, but it's aggression actually from Winthrop. Ooh, and somehow the Boombot actually finds Nicey. At least they're able to find Redux, but Verno was ready at least to trade that one out as well. Infiltrator so aware. Dapper flown. And just like that, things get a little bit more complicated for Oxygen on this one, but they still have that weapon advantage. They're going to be making their way over to this B site. Already Infiltrator spots out the information. A little bit of a wingman flying through. Going to get that spike down as Winthrop to get themselves ready. They're all splitting up on this one. This is an interesting strategy, Wyatt. They do have three sheriffs. Well, could get some headshots. Oh, oh my me. god. Speaking of cathartic, I'm so upset seeing that. Thankfully, Scuba ready on the other side. Contingency does get used. Shield blocking for a second as Jerk goes in up top. Scuba still wins that duel out. Screwface in this 1v2. Aware that both of the members of Oxygen are up there. But Oxygen just playing so smart off that timer. And yeah, Mosh still available as well. Just goes a little bit to the side, but Scuba just has to show a little bit of presence here. Screwface does find one, but Verno shuts it down. Even though it's a win for Oxygen, the economy's not going to be looking good in this next. Luckily, they didn't invest too much with the double ghost, so they are able to get a pretty decent buy going here. I'm looking to see if they opt for an outlaw anywhere. Because so many sheriffs were bought from the Winthrop side that they're either going to be sacrificing utility or sacrificing that heavy armor for the light. But not going to be the case. Oxygen instead, <laughs> they're going to have a Redux get a Bucky. So might be time to <laughs> double satchel through B here. But they're going to be walking into this trap set up again that Winthrop tried to use on the pistol round. Winthrop really just loving these trap plays. And already... Some utility from Oxygen to try and flush it out. Screwface holding such a far angle as well, just in case Oxygen aggress. So many resources being tossed into B, but with the Neon being able to walk so quickly, it kind of works out. They're able to rotate around quickly, and Silence wins that against Redux. But already Infiltrator ready on this defense. Ooh, nicey up top. It is going to be going down before things even oh get God, competitive at all. A little bit of damage on Infiltrator, but not going to be enough. Oxygen gets shut down at the door. Winthrop win that. I love this, but I hate this. That's two <laughs> rounds in a row where he's gotten the sliding kills. I can't. <laughs> I've seen enough. I have seen enough. Our Oxygen here, though, they are going to be on to that full buy now. Five rifles. No Bucky's in sight. And Scuba already has the pick-me-up, the Clove Ultimate, to you know, take an aggressive line this take round. One one. Maybe be that point of contact for Oxygen, immediately get the res so they can keep fighting. Dude, I'm wondering whether or not we're going to be seeing Infiltrator go for the overdrive. Seems like that's going to be the case. Does find one, but immediately traded out. Excellent understanding from Oxygen. As Dapper watching the backline spots one out. That's going to be Omen taken out of the equation. And Scuba still not done. Finds Nicey as well. Oxygen so aggressive, and Winthrop University read them like a book on this round. Sorry, other way around. <laughs> no yeah, it's on many rounds going to be the case on attack here. When you're going up against the Neon, the Breach, there's, of course, going to be rounds mixed in from the defense where they just go all out aggro to catch you out. And if you do a good job as the attacking teams, just holding the proper angles for each other, baiting out that aggression and finding the kills, you will have rounds like this where you can essentially just get it for free. Surely at this point, yeah, Jerk and Screwface, they are relegated to the save and no other options. Yeah, their original attack plan just didn't work out. Couldn't deny the spike plant, and given the amount of firepower that's available for Oxygen, it's it's best just to back off. And moving forwards, too, I mean, we're going to see Verno have the Thrash available in this next round. So Oxygen, they're doing a really good job with their ultimate economy in addition to just being able to win these rounds. Absolutely. That is just the perks and benefits of having a gecko in your comp. Just the wingman being your little plant machine, getting you orbs every <laughs> single round as well. You just get thrash after thrash after thrash on the attack side. And just the like results, that. It could be enough for Oxygen to get 12 rounds here. We'll have to see. Winter, they're going to have more than enough cash for a full buy here. Yeah, and... Moving to the next one as well, if Redux is able to get that showstopper online, they just need to capture one more ultimate orb. They could do an excellent job at just running over Winthrop. And this is where things start to get dicey because Winthrop, they lose one more round. Suddenly Oxygen find themselves at match point. Winthrop economy is not going to be good. This is a very crucial timeout from Winthrop because they have to stop Oxygen now if they want to come back in this map. Yeah, absolutely. It's either 
the beginnings or at least the hopes of making a comeback or it is wraps for Lotus and we're going to be heading to Winthrop's map pick of Bind next. You know, they've tried to mix in some aggro rounds. It hasn't really worked so far. We'll see what the adaptation is going to be from Winthrop. We'll see how they try to respond here to the thrash coming in, most likely from Averno on the site hit to clear everything out. And frankly, though, you have to expect that in a situation where the Thrash is going to come in on a site exec, that Winthrop can dodge that and then flood into the site so effectively. With the Breach utility coming back in, the Neon can get in deep so quickly, your ISO can follow up with the shield active. Floods should be fantastic with this composition. Your Neon as well with the other stun and tandem with the Breach one, that's a situation where they should be really, you know, maybe not favored necessarily, but it should be a situation where they can absolutely dominate the team sometimes when they're, you know, forced to go for that plant and you can flood. And this is interesting. Oxygen, they're fully aware of this defensive setup that Winthrop University have kind of set up. They know that A-Site is probably where they want to go. Caught that lurking ISO. Now the initiation going to be underway. Ooh! Jerk, not able to stay alive. Mitch does an excellent job clearing things out with Shorty in hand. The paint shells get tossed up as well, just to deter them for a second. Get set up as Scuba goes up. Might have bit off more than they can chew. It's going to be the slide come through. Not able to find a kill on the slide, but will get traded out. Redux not quite done yet. Throws the Shorty instead, but it's absolute chaos on the site as now Scuba looking in the back here. Does have a little bit of over health as well. Contingency gets tossed out, and yeah, that's going to be the shield, but Scuba's not quite dead yet. We'll be backing off, and Dapper on a side angle catches both of the members of Winthrop looking the wrong way and oxygen clean house yeah those final two from Winthrop just getting a little bit baited in by the pick me up trying to capitalize off you know scuba having that second or so when you get out of the alt where your gun isn't really out yet and you're not able to fight but dapper just cleans them up with these um these defensive rounds I would really prefer to see Winthrop essentially just living and backing up from the site giving it up not trying to hard anchor and then just playing together for the flood they're losing players before that even Coming becomes up. an option and now oxygen foot on the gas pedal nobody's home on c let's just run it and they're so confident about it too i mean it's just gecko utility really just clearing out the site and well the thrash will be able to be picked up yet again showstopper still available as well footsteps get hurt Screwface now moving in, does have this kill contract active, spots the head out of bitch, might not even get an opportunity to use it, finally will be going, grabs Redux instead, this could be a deadly competition, uh oh, that's the wrong weapon that you don't want there, but at least able to break the shield, Screwface still comes out on top of that one as Infiltrator finds Mitch's head, now Infiltrator will have a weapon upgrade, as Winthrop, as predicted, will now flood the site, and they do find as well, Dapper just spraying through, able to find Screwface, it's gonna be the Dizzy up top, finds one, and the Neural Theft actually will do more than enough to give away the position. Time running down, they have to flood through, but somehow Oxygen just find all the kills necessary. The members of Winthrop University line up and Oxygen knock them right down. Oxygen just look way too good on this map. Since they started playing this Clove comp, still now undefeated. That is four wins in a row for them in Challengers with it. The opportunities it gives Scuba, a fantastic mechanical player on the Clove to take fights, be an aggressive component has just been so good for them. This comp is really cool. Love watching them play with it. And on top of that, too, they were able to shut down the Neon ISO combination. I'm still a little bit surprised that we did see uh, Winthrop decide to pull that one out, but we're going to be thrown to a quick break. When we get back, we're going to have map number two ready for you. Let's see if we see a little bit more silliness just on just after this. Got me into gaming. Um, I'll just say, like, I started gaming in general as a kid. Um, I mean, I have an older brother who played some games here and there. He wasn't really a big gamer. I think I was entirely like a, I was like a competitive kid growing up. I had like a bunch of sports and whatnot. But 
just ended up trying some games and whatnot. It was kind of competitive at the time. I had fun competing with my friends, so started liking it. Started playing more. Someone that got me into gaming was just my my uncle. Um, I used to come down to like my grandma's house and like we would just play like Pokemon on the DS or just like something like that. Just like, just something just something small, like not 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 anything on like consoles or anything. Just on the small DSs. Um, my my older brother got me into gaming when I was like really young. We played um, Pokemon and. When he got me into PC gaming, I played like my first PC game was like World of Warcraft. But yeah, my oldest brother got me into it. His name's Brett. He's awesome. He's a day one gamer in my family. Mostly my brother, I would say. Like, there's like a cliche, like you know, older brother like games, and then the little brother kind of joins after after watching him. But that was pretty much the same for me. Definitely been gaming all my life, so I gotta say my big brother. You know, growing up watching him game made me start gaming also. So yeah, my big brother. Uh, who got me into gaming? I, I have to say my brother. I mean, uh, back in the day when I was uh, a kid, my brother got me into, I think the first things were like the Nintendo 64 with the, the like the Super Smash Bros and all that stuff. But eventually we went to like the PS3 and then I got really big into like Call of Duty and whatnot. So I was like really big on COD. Like he showed me all like the pro the the pros and stuff like that nate shot was there and skump was there at the time and i always fell in love with pro gaming but yeah it's gonna have to be my brother uh my brother got me into gaming when i was like like i don't know like three or four um i actually don't even know to be honest it's like more of a game itself that like got me so hooked on gaming it was minecraft minecraft was like my first game and did i still be playing minecraft sometimes like every now and then who got me into gaming? Definitely just my older brother and my dad. They both played games their whole life and got me into it when I was younger. Ooh, all right. Um, my dad was the one that got me into gaming. I was like five years old um, and he made World of Warcraft accounts for me and my brother. So was grinding since I was young. Who got me into gaming? Uh, I'd have to say probably my brother. I grew up and we had like, he had a bunch of consoles. So I would kind of just like, steal some time away from him whenever like he wouldn't be playing and then it kind of got me into pc gaming eventually one day the game starts long before the game starts and warm hands are faster hands gain the upper hand and power up your pre-game warm-up with zippo hand warmers 